I am not saying that to say that trans women aren't women. I am just saying that those that they got. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> How you doing, people? Whether you are a man with male genitalia, a female with female genitalia, a male with female genitalia, a female with male genitalia, a little of everything, or you got nothing, if you're a complete eunuch, you are welcome here on The Rubin Report. I'm Dave Rubin. It is June 21st, 2022, and we are all, everyone in this room is feeling a very special show today. Today is going to be a celebration of all things trans. It is coming, it is here, it is everywhere. Trans celebration, Pride Month, the Navy has gone queer. It's bananas, people. Uh, before we get to that though, uh, in case you forgot, July 14th, I'm gonna be at the Miami Improv. I hope to see you here in the free state of Florida in the great city of Miami. You can get tickets at daverubin.com slash events. And we are trying something a little new today, by the way. Uh, for those of you that are watching on Rumble, uh, we are gonna be reading off some Rumble rants at the end of the show. Normally, we only use locals comments at the end. So of course, we're gonna stick with our locals comments as always. So if you wanna join the live chat, you can go to rubenreport.locals.com. Uh, but if you are watching on Rumble and you wanna do a Rumble rant, you can do that and we will read some comments at the end. But more importantly than any of the clerical stuff, Today is a tremendous trans celebration here at the Rubin Report. And not only a trans celebration, a celebration of all things woke, all things collective, all of the things that we knew weren't true just a few years ago that we now know are true today that are being peddled by our political elite and our mainstream media and everything else. So I'm very excited for the program. Michael said that today's show is gonna be an 8.93, which was a very specific but positive number. Uh, Phoenix really went high, 9.5. And then uh, Connor, who usually lowballs me uh, using the Price is Right method, he said uh, 9.6 today. So that's the type of pressure that I'm up against, but you guys will be the judge in about 40 minutes from now. Real quick, let's talk about real estate agents I trust and then get to it. You know, buying or selling a home is already one of the most stressful things you can do, and it can be 10 times worse if you're not working with the right agent. Generally speaking, our homes are our biggest investment. That's a ton of responsibility, and you need an agent who takes that seriously. That's why I recommend real estate agents I trust. They work with only the best agents in every market. They do their homework, talking to every agent before inviting them to join their network. And here's a big one. They only work with full-time pros, no part-time or inexperienced agents. Their team makes the intro and then follows you through the buying or selling process to make sure that you're satisfied. Their agents, uh, the agents they work with have long track records and are the best sellers in their field. They're part of this audience. They share your values and they're almost anywhere you wanna go, including the free state of Florida. The process is simple. Just go to realestateagentsitrust.com today and provide them with some basic info. Their team will contact you to make an introduction to their preferred agent in your town and then you move and then you're happier. That's how it works, people. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on with this more than meets the eye movement, this trans movement that seemingly is being pushed on us from every corner of society right now. Of course, our cold open today uh, was from Dave Chappelle's last Netflix special. And the reason that we threw to that was because Dave Chappelle has been pushing back against this woke trans insanity for a while. He is allowed to make jokes about things. What comedians used to do back in the day was take a topical issue and poke fun at it, using humor to describe a truthful situation so that people could think about things a little bit differently. That's what Chappelle's been doing. Uh, there aren't many other comedians doing that these days, uh, but Chappelle was gonna be honored uh, by his high school, is gonna be honored by his high school, but some people are not very happy because Dave Chappelle is a very, very scary man. We've got some info from the Daily Wire. Dave Chappelle will be honored by his high school alma mater after supporters reportedly outnumbered critics in a fundraising challenge issued after his transgender jokes 
drew a backlash against Netflix. Chappelle was previously heckled by students at the school who slammed him for comments he made in his Netflix comedy special, The Closer. The renaming ceremony comes after the comedian issued a challenge to supporters and critics to donate to his alma mater and said whichever side raises the most money will determine whether or not the theater would be named after him. But he requested, if you don't care enough to donate, please shut the F up forever. Okay, so this is kind of beautiful. Uh, here you have Chappelle making jokes about stuff. And by the way, you should be able to make jokes about stuff. You know, if we said, okay, you can't make jokes about gay people, you can't make jokes about black people, you can't make jokes about trans people or anything, you'd have to obliterate absolutely everything. And by the way, we've been doing quite a job of obli obliterating absolutely everything over the last couple of years, right? We've canceled uh, episodes of the Golden Girls. Do you know this one? I've mentioned it once on the show before. There's an episode where Rose and Blanche come out and they have mud on their faces because they're doing facials, not that kind of facial, the other kind of facial, and, uh, and demonetized. Um, and they, the woman claims that they're in blackface. That's the joke. So they removed that from Hulu. We've canceled so many things. We got rid of Aunt Jemima and we got rid of Uncle Ben. We took all the black people off the products. Who was it? Was it the white supremacists who did it? No, it was the wokesters who did it. Uh, but if you want to go around and police comedy, you're going to have to get rid of everything. You're going to have to get rid of Seinfeld, right? The, uh, Jerry bought a uh, statue of a Native American. Uh, to give to Elaine one day. They made some Indian jokes, the AIDS ribbon, like all, the, so you're gonna have to get rid of that. You're gonna have to get rid of every Simpsons episode. You're gonna have to get rid of Family Guy. You're gonna have to get rid of absolutely everything. So Chappelle, not only making the jokes, but then putting it to the people and he's gonna, he's gonna go forward and they're, they're gonna donate this money and it's all good. Uh, that's how you fight back. Uh, but it isn't just that this stuff is hitting us culturally. So the reason I started with the Chappelle thing isn't that, uh, that Chappelle's special or what's going on at his school is so important. Uh, but what's happening with the trans thing, that we, I, that we all seemingly have to bow down to this, that if you do not accept that four-year-olds who feel a different way, a boy who feels a little bit like a girl, should be on puberty blockers and on their way to becoming the other gender, if you don't buy into all of that, that you're somehow a bigot or mean or anything else, well, all of this nonsense, it's leaking into our military. And this video came out yesterday. We're gonna show you a couple of clips of it. This is absolutely insane. This is from the US Navy. I am not kidding you. You're gonna be watching this in a second from now and you're gonna go, Dave, that can't be real. This seems like amateur hour from a high school, uh, but this is the US Navy training its staff to create a safe space by using gender pronouns. Take a look. Hi, my name is Johnny and I use he, him pronouns. Hi, and I'm Kanchi and I use she, her pronouns. And we're here to talk about pronouns. What is a pronoun? A pronoun is how we identify ourselves apart from our name and it's also how people refer to us in conversations. Using the right pronouns is a really simple way to affirm someone's identity. It is a signal of acceptance and respect. Instead of saying something like, hey guys, you can say, hey everyone or hey team. Yeah, and now that you say that, another way that we could show that we're allies and that we accept everybody is to maybe include our pronouns in our emails or, like we just did, introduce ourselves using our pronouns. Oh, there's more coming, people. And that's real. I know you're watching it. You're going, that can't be real. Dave, today is not April Fool's Day. Don't punk us like that. But that is real. That is a real video that the U.S. Navy put out. Who are those two people? They don't even seem like real people. They seem like automatons. What is her accent? It seems like it's robotic. And they're saying things that have nothing to do with the Navy. Didn't the Navy have something to do with a bunch of guys getting in the water and then going to save people perhaps? Or we blow up something or we got more. I'm gonna stay on screen for this one because this is so insane. Here we go. And another tip uh, for you to remember their uh pronoun next time, it's in your mind, kind of go through a progression of three good things about the person using their pronoun. So let's say the person chooses to use they, mm -hmm. then you will in your mind go, they have a nice shirt, they have a nice smile, they are really smart. So that kind of sticks in your brain. That is. Listen, I got to warn you people. There is collective brain damage happening across the world right now. 
okay? It's happening right in front of our faces. Imagine, imagine you're in the Navy. Imagine you come from a proud Navy family, right? I've been to Annapolis where the Naval Academy is. I was at the Naval Academy about a year ago. Took a walk around, it's a really lovely place. Imagine you come from a proud Naval family and they are subjecting you to that sheer drivel. Not, not only is it complete insanity, it's just complete insanity that has nothing to do with nothing. It has nothing, certainly nothing to do with the Navy being effective at what your job is, protecting this country, making sure that if a pirate ship is attacking another ship, that you're gonna take care of the other ship. It continues. Just to share something with you that happened uh, the other day at a cookout I was at, we were uh, talking about pronouns and somebody was disagreeing with how different people um, see themselves as different pronouns and the argument was, if you look like a female, then it's she, her, because that's what's normal. And if you make me call you something else, then you're infringing on my rights. And I, I was really taken aback by the comment and I really wasn't sure how to respond. And the only thing I could really think quickly to say was, it's not about you at all. And it's mostly and ultimately about respect. But if I were to tell you over and over again, my name is Johnny, and you insist on mispronouncing my name, I would feel disrespected by you. Some names are very difficult to pronounce, but do you know what is very easy to pronounce? She, she he, he, they. Let's be clear about something. Let's be clear, that's what Joe Biden says all the time. Let's be clear, she, he, them are fucking bananas. Those people are insane. You don't have to behave the way these people want. They're not real human beings. And what I mean by that is they have no understanding of what it is to get and earn respect and to be an adult in a world that doesn't have to bow to you, a world that exists and then you do your best within that world. The fact that this has leaked into our militaries is so nuts. But you also may be watching this and going, Dave, you don't understand. You're not a, a Gen Z. You know, you're not a millennial. You're not one of the young kids of the day. These, these things are very important. The pronouns, the she, he, the ze, zer, all of it, it's very important. You're, you're old, man. You're an old, you're 45. I'm gonna be 46 this Sunday, by the way. It's my birthday. You're, you're an old timer now. You don't understand the importance of transsexual gender pronouns. And the thing is, guys, I learned about this. I learned about this years ago from the original Transformer. Prime, come out and face me, unless you're afraid to be beaten by a woman. <laughs> Those mouth-watering breasts aren't fooling anyone, Megatron. I'm still gonna shoot you. You should check your privilege, Prime, before one of my new warriors checks it for you. Behold, Curvebot. I'm sexy. Safe space. <laughs> I'm Black Bart. Yeah, I'm just a black guy. I don't really want to be here. Yes, you do. You're a minority. Start acting like it. Total sidebar. If you want to watch a great, great movie, uh, instead of the disastrous 17 Michael Bay Transformer movies that you can't understand a word that they're saying and, you know, Shia LaBeouf is running away from some computer-generated monstrosity, Go see the original 1985 Transformers movie, and oh my God, it is just absolute perfection. Uh, but joking aside, there are some good things happening because as I've just shown you for these first 10 minutes, I mean, there's just so, we are just being inundated with absolute drivel, but enough of us are starting to laugh at it, mock it, and now in this case, actually fight against it. So I am now going to show you a video from California, so I do have to put money in the jar. Uh, but this is actually quite spectacular. This is a, a Californian mother. Her name is Erin Friday, and she's a lefty. She's a liberal, uh, she'll make the point in just a moment. Um, and she has basically had it with what's going on related to all of the gender nonsense and the fact that Gavin Newsom, psychopath Gavin Newsom, wants California to become a gender sanctuary state so that kids in other states can move there to have their genitals and boobs cut off. Take a look. Hi, my name's Erin Friday. I'm a Democrat and I voted for same-sex marriage. I'm one of the leads of our duty and parents of our OGD kids. There are thousands of parents in our group. 
We are cheering on the states that are starting, stopping gender medicine on children. Parents in the state of California have lost custody of their children merely by calling their child by their legal name. SB 107 must not pass. Custody is one of the hardest fought aspects of a divorce, and California cannot just wipe away an out-of-state agreement addressing which parent controls the medical health of a child. Scott Weiner, a man without children, is pushing gender affirmative medicine laws for minors, while other countries are moving away from the affirmation model. The number of kids going to gender clinics is skyrocketing. In the UK, it is a 5,000% uptick for girls, as seen in the graph. It's the same here. We parents know it's a social contagion as we watch clusters of friend groups come out as trans. It's not organic. If trans medicine prevents suicide, why then, as trans medicine gets more prevalent, are more girls committing suicide? Don't make California a refuge for what will be seen as the largest medical scandal in history. Okay, so there's obviously some serious stuff here, but the uh, funny stuff first. The guy who is pushing this in California, he's a representative, congressman, a Democrat, of course. And as she said, his name is Scott Weiner. Wiener, the man who is creating a sanctuary state for people, young children to come and get their wieners chopped off is named Wiener. Okay, you see what's going on here? Uh, joking aside, um, this woman, as she points out, she's a Democrat, so she's been misguided politically, let's say, but she voted for same-sex marriage. She's obviously not a bigot. She is not a racist person or a right-wing maniac or alt-right. She's probably not a Trump supporter or anything else. She is a liberal who has been mugged by reality, which is pretty much everyone in America right now, right? All of the sort of middle people who just thought, oh, the liberalism, the decent liberalism that we had for these last 50, 60, 100 years in America, if not more actually, uh, was gonna just keep working. It has morphed into something horrific. And that thing that it has morphed into is now fully and wholly infected the Democrat Party, which is a, why a guy by the name of Scott Weiner is now pushing for California to be a sanctuary state for kids to come and have their gender change. And of course, you cannot actually change your gender. You can change your body, but you cannot change uh, your uh, you cannot change your sex, your biological sex. Uh, oh, interestingly, I'm just seeing this right now. Thanks for the heads up on this. Erin uh, Friday, that woman right there, her daughter detransitioned, meaning her daughter transitioned to become a boy and then at some point along the road actually now went back to being a girl. Uh, she also brings up these incredible numbers, these staggering, staggering statistics of this explosion of mostly young girls that are becoming boys. And it usually is not young boys becoming girls. There are some instances of that. 5,000% increase in the UK. I mean, this is extraordinary stuff. This is a social contagion, much more than a biological uh, inconsistency or problem. And everyone understands it. And the fact that you would do this to children, do this to children. And again, as I pointed out on the show yesterday, you know, if you think that everything can be solved by science, meaning if a young boy really thinks he's a girl or a young girl really thinks he's a boy, if you think everything can be solved by science, meaning give them puberty blockers, give them testosterone so they can be more boyish, give them uh, estrogen to be more girlish, why wouldn't you, if you have a young boy who wants to be a girl, maybe give him more testosterone so he could maybe feel like more of a man? Wouldn't that possibly make more sense? I'm not even saying it does. I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't understand the full science of all of this, but what is the push for all of this? We all know it's insane, uh, but there are some sane people out there. You know Jordan Peterson. He uh, tweeted this. I thought it was quite succinct. California, haven for the medical butchery of minors. And it really is as simple as that. That is what California will become under Gavin Newsom. They will have eight month abortions. Uh, so you'll be killing children. Then you'll be chopping off children's genitals. You will hire people based on the color of their skin. And the blue states will just absolutely crumble. And the red states will, will do their best to have some semblance 
of sanity. Uh, but what's interesting about all of this is not only what's happening sort of on the ground with parents that are fighting it, it's how the media uh, covers all of the trans stuff. Uh, so we've got some info here uh, from NBC on uh, what's going on in the swimming, the female swimming category, which we've talked a bit about before uh, from NBC. World Swimming's governing body effectively banned transgender athletes from competing in women's events on Sunday. FINA members at the organization's extraordinary General Congress voted 71.5% in favor of its new gender inclusion policy that only permits swimmers who transition before age 12 to compete in women's events. This is not saying that people are encouraged to transition by the age of 12. It's what the scientists are saying, that if you transition after the start of puberty, you have an advantage, which is unfair. James Pierce, who is the spokesperson for FINA President Hussein al Masalam, told the Associated Press. They're not saying everyone should transition by age 11. That's ridiculous. You can't transition by that age in most countries and hopefully you wouldn't be encouraged to. Basically what they're saying is that it is not feasible for people who have transitioned to compete without having an advantage. Okay, so you guys know all about this. We have shown you the videos and the pictures of Leah Thomas. Leah Thomas, who was a very marginal male swimmer, I think he was ranked something like 425th in the nation, who started absolutely crushing it and winning all of the gold medals in female swimming once he decided that he was a she. And then everyone bowed down to it and the feminists of the day were applauding literally a woman with a penis. And I'll, literally a woman with a penis, it's all so stupid. He still has a penis and he was winning the women's uh, swimming events. Although here in Florida, Ron DeSantis actually signed something saying that the girl, the actual girl who came in second place got the silver medal, that she was the actual winner. Uh, but okay, the point of this is that something good is happening. The video I first showed you about this mother stepping up and saying, no, California must fight against this good sign. Then that the swimming organization is saying, no, there are obviously biological differences between boys and girls. We know this. It's just true. Guys are generally stronger than women. Women are generally more nurturing than dudes. It's just how it is and it's okay. Nature, nurture, hunter, gatherer, okay? Basic stuff, you guys all get it. But what's interesting is how this is constantly being pushed by the media and why is it constantly being pushed by the media? Well, we've got some stuff from the televised mental institution known as MSNBC no trans women. Um, is this a, a solution in search of a problem? I really think that's what's going on here. There is not some grand existential threat to women's sports caused by trans women's participation. The grand existential threat to women's sports is not putting women's sports on TV, basically, and not supporting them. So I, I think that, you know, we have this one woman, Leah Thomas, who has unfortunately become the face of a problem that doesn't really exist. Yeah. Um, and and she's she's being used as uh, as a peg in, in these culture wars that we're seeing around this country and around the world. I mean, just the way they use language, she's not a she. That, that is a person who says that they are a woman who still has male genitalia and shows them in the locker room. That's what one of the other female, actual female competitors said. Um, it's not not a problem just because it, right now it's mostly focused on him, her, whatever the hell you wanna say. It, that doesn't make it not a problem. That actually is a problem. It's the beginning of a problem. And why is it that the feminists the tolerant progressive feminists who are supposed to love women. Isn't that one of the things? Women are oppressed. The patriarchy, man, it's coming to get you. So why is it that the feminists are actually against women? Could it possibly be because the entire woke progressive industrial complex is a load of bullshit designed to confuse you so ultimately they could control you? Could it be that? Or is it just that they really are into chicks with penises beating women in swimming? There's a sentence I've never said before. Uh, and of course the idea here that somehow Leah Thomas is the victim and we should have real sympathy for him and that whole thing, just complete nonsense. But all of this continues throughout the mainstream media. I saw this headline from CNBC yesterday. This is a humdinger of a headline. I can't win in this market. Why LGBTQ homebuyers say mortgage rates are hitting them especially hard. 
It's also written by a guy named James Pound. <laughs> Wiener, the guy Wiener is the one that wants to chop off the Wiener and get them into Cali. And then a guy named James Pound is telling you during Gay Pride Month about the, how it's hitting gay people especially hard. I mean, what the, f this is, we're, we're in a simulation. We really are in a simulation. Um, I am fairly certain that there are no special interest rates for gay people. Uh, I just bought a house. I was not informed. I'm gonna have to talk to my business manager. I was not informed that gay people uh, get a special interest rate. Uh, I was not offered any sort of special interest rate. They didn't quiz me on gayness to get a special interest rate. So the, these headlines, this is all, it's all just absolutely insane. But not only, okay, so you get it. The trans stuff is insane, but they're also mixing all of this, of course, with the race stuff, right? Because this is all they got. This is all they got. If you don't bow to their trans agenda, you're a transphobe. If you don't bow to their race agenda, you're a racist. Uh, well, we've got more. We've got more because I don't know if you know this, but Monday was Juneteenth which is now a federal holiday, thanks to uh, Joe Biden. I did not know it was a federal holiday and I tried to do a wire transfer on Friday that apparently got delayed. And then one of my contractors didn't get paid and now I got a freaking uh, stair, step, a uh, big set of stairs downstairs with no railing on it, sidebar. Uh, here's the televised mental institution known as MBC uh, with a panel of women talking about how they're oppressed. Can we toast to this? The hair, 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 the the black hair, yeah, the How do we get our hair and makeup together? Back in the news business, the, your beautiful hair mm -hmm. would not have been allowed even five yeah. years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went renegade last year and started wearing every kind of braid style that you, you could find. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I I'm gonna tell you when I did it. Let me tell you when I did it. When that Crown Act passed in New York. Mm, yeah. I'm gonna wear all the different kinds yeah. of red. Yeah. As black women, every single thing about us is politicized yes. Right. Yes. and That's criminalized. Right. That's yeah. right. As we were having this conversation about black hair, and I know everyone keeps saying that we're in the midst of a national reckoning. You know, I'm still waiting for that. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. honestly, what, what I think is more accurate is to say that we've been in the midst of an awakening. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but the reckoning for me will be when we codify the value of black lives yeah. in our budgets and in our policies. I mean, it's just all such pure nonsense. It's like, man, these, these are basically all rich people who are on television, who have whatever they want, who got in all the makeup they want, had their hair done up however they want. They're not being criminalized. Nobody is coming for them. They are being elevated by the culture, by mainstream media, by the rest of the nonsense. And by the way, if they're complaining about makeup, okay? Look, I've got a little extra shine on my forehead today, okay? Can I get a little powder up in here? Can I, you see? Okay, can I get a little something on the cheeks? A little something, that would be, that would be a little, can I get a little, I feel like I'm a little, a little isn't that? See, white guy, I can get powder whenever I want. That's, uh, that's the point. It's just such endless insanity, but let's keep going. You wanna keep going on the insanity train? Once you're on the insanity train, that's the thing. Once you are on the MSNBC, trained to Bonkersville. It's hard to get off that train. Here's Joy Reid talking to our vice president, who is one broken hip away from being the most powerful person in the world, about uh, Katanji Brown Jackson and uh, her hearings when the Republicans were being very, very mean to her, obviously, because she's black. We all sat and watched the Katanji Brown Jackson uh, hearings uh, in which she very calmly um, sat through what I think a lot of, particularly black women, let's just be honest, felt was brazen disrespect from senators like Lindsey Graham, senators like Tom Cotton, senators like Josh Hawley. What did you think when you watched that hearing? I will tell you, Joy, I experienced great joy when I watched this brilliant, phenomenal black woman, jurist, be so smart and just cut through the political gamesmanship that they were attempting to incite. And she just was composed and as far as I'm concerned was taking a whole lot of people to school. Those are clown people. 
I don't care about the color of their skin and I don't care about their gender. Those are not serious people. Those are ridiculous people. Um, that woman should not be the vice president of the United States. That other person should not be on television paid by a giant corporation to bring news. But she's very proud because she was, you know, she was really great in the face of all of the racism and the mean stuff that they said and all that. And she schooled them. She schooled them. We've got some video of the schooling. Uh, can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition? Dave, don't do that. That's selectively edited videotape to make it seem like she doesn't know what a woman is. There must be video of her schooling mean people like white supremacist Ted Cruz. For example, I'm, I'm an Hispanic man. Could, could I decide I was an Asian man? W w would I have the ability to be an Asian man and challenge Harvard's discrimination because I made that decision? Senator, I'm not able to answer your question. You're asking me about hypotheticals and... Um, well, I'm asking you how you would assess standing if I, if I came in and said, I have decided I identify as an Asian man. Damn, yo, she schooled Cruz. Cruz is busted, man. He's done. He's out. That's it. She's composed and she... Oh, God. Continuing on the train to crazy town via MSNBC, Ibram X. Kendi, who is the biggest race huckster in the entire country, a man who once said that he was horrified when his son came home from school thinking that he was a girl, even though he pretends to be an intersectional king, uh, he was on Joe Scarborough's program. Joe Scarborough, of course, is a total fraud. We've illustrated that quite effectively over the last couple of weeks. Uh, here they go talking about, well, racism. So uh, tell, tell everybody why you wrote the book. Well, I, I wrote the book because the, the, the more that I, that I researched uh, this issue about race and children, the more that I continued on as a father, the more I realized that kids are actually the most vulnerable to racism, mm -hmm. but, with, but they're the ones who were least likely to engage about it. And so I wanted to write a book that would allow parents and teachers and caregivers to figure out ways to protect our children from these simplistic messages like dark is ugly and light, you know, is good. According to scholars, by three years old, our kids have an adult-like concept of race. By three years old, our kids are attaching uh, qualities like smartness and honesty and cleanliness to, to skin color. Nobody's doing that, dude. You are a fraud. I dropped the F-bomb there, it was gonna happen. Um, you're just a complete fraud. Like everyone that's ever met a three-year-old, they don't care about any of this stuff. You then, by introducing race to everything with them, create a new generation of racists, right? You're creating these soft racists and they're not these racists, this new generation of race obsessed whack jobs that you're creating and these woke lunatics, uh, they're not old school racists. Like I don't want a black person to be at the same water fountain as me, which of course everyone would think is wrong. And there is literally nobody in America in any capacity in any influential capacity that would want anything like that or laws that would differentiate between the races, except for you guys. You guys who have decided that race should matter when it comes to college admission. You guys who have decided race should matter when it comes to hiring and who gets on TV and who gets what award and all of this stuff. So what, Dave, is the silver lining? You've been taking us on the train to woke hell this entire show. Save me, Dave. Well, nobody's buying any of this nonsense anymore and they can't hide that, right? Nobody's buying any of this and this stuff which is being pushed through the elderly man who's pretending to be president who almost broke his hip the other day, Joe Biden. Uh, well, they can't hide the fact that nobody's listening to him anymore either. And uh, here is uh, CNN's John Harwood. He's a Democrat activist who pretends to just be a, a nonpartisan uh, commentator. Uh, and he's uh, defending Joe Biden's mental capacity. So where are Biden's critiques of, of the media legitimate? Where are they justified? And where would you say they're not justified? Well, look, let, let's talk about the age thing uh, to begin yeah. with. The, you, well, you let's mentioned... put up Mark Leibovich's column. Mark Leibovich, you know, top writer for The Atlantic, saying Biden should not run for re-election. It's not just Sean Hannity talking about Biden's age. It's The Atlantic magazine. 
That's right. On the other hand, what's false is that he is not capable of doing the job right now or he's not mentally um, in tune with the demands of the job. Anybody, any aide who engages with him or reporters, we can see this. The gears of his mind are working. Uh, that is, uh, that's an issue uh, pushed by uh, uh, right-wing media, but it's not correct. You know, the thing is that they're so in on it, right? They're so running their protection racket that we all protect each other, that we make sure you can't see the things that you can see, that they can't stop lying. I think that's really sort of where we're at with all of this thing. So John Harwood, they're saying that the gears of Biden's mind are working. No, they're, they're not. They're not. And as I always say, I don't take any great pleasure in that. I wish that they were, even if I disagree with his policies, I would like to believe that the president is mentally fit. He obviously isn't. Man, I mean, just watch. We'll, we'll show it again next week. Uh, we found a really great compilation. They took all of the greatest hits of that disastrous, absolutely disastrous interview uh, that Biden gave to Jimmy Kimmel the other night. He cannot finish a sentence. And Kimmel knew it, and Kimmel saved him several times by finishing his sentences or throwing to commercial. The guy can't go off script, and he has trouble reading when he's on script. That is just a fact. So now you, John Harwood, you are lying. And by the way, you see even the way that Stelter framed it there, that they're, this is really about Biden's age. No, no one's saying it's about age. You can be 78, 79, 84, and, and very, very mentally competent. Of course you can. Of course you can. But he is not. That is just the reality of the situation. Uh, but again, you guys see it. They don't want you to see it. And there's a lot more that you see that they don't want you to see. Uh, we've got a bit more from CNN on what's going on with the economy. Secretary Yellen, who has the job you once had, said this week that, quote, there is nothing to suggest a recession is in the works. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. You think um, a recession is in the works? I think that when, infl I think when inflation is as high as it is right now, and unemployment is as low as it is right now, it's almost always been followed within two years by inflation. By All right, so that's basically the former Treasury Secretary saying that the current Treasury Secretary uh, is wrong. And I suspect that she probably is wrong, but uh, don't worry about Janet Yellen because as you guys know, she has hope. There's no question that we have huge inflation pressures, that inflation is really our top economic problem at this point, and that it's critical that we address it. So um, I, do I do expect inflation to remain high, although I very much hope that it will be coming down now. Well, I hope so too. Thank you, Janet Yellen. Sign the check. Janet Yellen, she hopes that the economy won't completely crash under her watch. Uh, but because you guys are seeing the things in your day-to-day -day life uh, that are real and the media can't keep hiding them, some of it is leaking to Biden himself and uh, he has a little trouble regulating his responses. I, 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 I probably, even more than ever. Not Wait. the majority of them aren't saying that. Come on, don't make things up, okay? Now you sound like a Republican politician. I'm joking, that was a joke. That was a joke. But all kidding aside, no, I don't think it is. Whatever, Joe, it's just all meaning. Like he says one thing, he means the other. It's a joke. It's not, a, it's just nothing. It's just nothing. The point of today's show is that you see stuff. Don't not see what you see because they don't want you to see it. You know what I mean? See it. Know that it's happening. Know that they're pushing this nonsense on you. Know that you're not alone. Know that reality exists, that gender exists, that math exists, that good exists, that bad exists. Know all that stuff. And, and we, we will get to the other side of this. This is just that weird state that we're in right now. Before the midterms, post COVID, all of, these, all of this stuff, this weird thing where the mainstream media is collapsing, the online world is rising, like all of these things, we're just in this weird amorphous place. And, it, and it, some days it feels really great. Some days it feels really weird. There's always more bizarreness, um, but man, Know some basic truths and you're going to be all right. Uh, we got a great cold close for you. But before we get to that, we are taking comments today from Rumble Rants and from the locals community. Sweetwater says there is a Golden Girls episode where slaves are mentioned. I'm glad the wokesters have not caught that one yet. Why, why would you have me read that now? Now, 
some freak over at Media Matters and they watch this show and they watch with a fine tooth comb and they're penciling down every single thing I say. They're going to go into all 170 episodes of The Golden Girls, uh, seven brilliant seasons, each season getting better than the next. Would you agree, Connor? I've got Connor watching all the Golden Girls right now. Where, where are you at? What season? Season, see, oh, you slowed down, man. You gotta, if you get past season four, I'm telling you, that's where it gets more bawdy and ridiculous. The outfits are better. Yeah. Um, I didn't, there's a reference to slavery. In the, yeah, well, of course. I mean, Blanche was from the old South. So there's a lot of that. Blanche's father, Big Daddy. He, there's some racist undertones there. Should Big Daddy be canceled? Is that what we're gonna do? But really think about it. They removed Betty freaking White. They took Betty White off an episode of The Golden Girls that just doesn't exist anymore. It's a hilarious episode that actually is anti-racist in the true sense of anti-racism because Dorothy's son is marrying a black woman. And at the beginning, there's all this tension, which mostly has to do with the fact that the black woman's much older than her young son. It doesn't even have to do with race. But then at the end, they get married and it's all good. It's all good. Ridiculous. Kathy says, I think Leah Thomas was the straw that broke the camel's back. The NCAA swimming championship was a joke and everyone saw it. Yeah, you know, sometimes you need one that is just so freaking obvious, right? You need one that is like, you know, you see something where you see the size of him versus the, the real girls, or you see the, uh, the time-lapsed video of the race. Did you see that? I think we played it once, right? Where you just see him just like this, like ping pong, and the girls are just swimming as hard as they can. But girls are a little slower than men. It's why most of the guys in the NBA are men. There you go. Uh, SW says, my program, oh, this is funny. My pronouns are M-A-G-A, ma Good. You get it? There you go. There you go. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, for more, if you'd like to play along during the show, you go to rubenreport.locals.com. And uh, as I said, we will be keeping an eye on Rumble Rants going forward. I will be in Miami on July 14th. You can go to daverubencom slash events if you would like to join me. Part one of my interview with Devin Nunes, former Republican congressman from California who is now running Truth Social, is up right now. And I thought we'd cold close it with a little throwback to the elderly man pretending to be president. See you tomorrow. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. It's a fully, I'm not joking.